if you're following the crowd, you'll likely get no further than the crowd. If you walk with Jesus, then you're likely to end up in places no one has ever seen before. If you're watching this video, we probably have a lot in common in that we're maybe cut from the same cloth. We're, we're passionate about the game, baseball or softball, and that we want to learn as much as we can, probably to help our own, our own players from our teams or our own children, our kids. From the time that I was a player to, to even now, I really observe the trends of the game, from the, the fielding trends that infielders have, outfielders trends, pitching trends, and especially the hitting trends. One trend that we have as coaches is this, that if you want to improve something, then you need to measure it. And I'm all in for that trend. But with hitting, we want to be more detailed. We want to have numbers involved. So, you know, we can measure, measure the distance of the hit, and we can measure, you know, um, a quantify if it's a pop up, a ground out, if it's a strikeout. But we want to go deeper. You know, much like what pitching is with velocity, we want to equ equate the value of the bat speed, how fast the ball comes off the bat. 24 years ago, when I got involved with coaching and, um, in, co in the collegiate level, I uh, had a great mentor named Frank Porco, and, and uh, we worked at a, I worked at a place called Grand Slam USA. Uh, that's where I got my start. And we had a, um, a great uh, expensive hitting device that would measure true bat speed. What we did was put these metallic uh, stickers at the end of the bats, and uh, the hitter was asked to swing the bat through an infrared light, and we can measure how fast the bat was going through the zone. Well, that was a quite expensive uh, uh, machine and apparatus uh, at the time, back in the early 90s. And uh, I guess to, to save money and try to you know, find a new way of quantifying it, coaches and scouts have adapted this uh, method of um, using a radar gun and uh, seeing how fast you can hit the ball off of the batting tee. Having a, a background in scouting and using radar guns, I was already familiar with the um, the good times and the the error times that scouts make when um, using radar guns. It's been my experience when we were um, clock pitchers that when we were the scouts were lined up behind the catcher and had the ball through towards the radar gun, our tracking times were a lot faster, more one to two miles an hour faster versus standing behind a pitcher with the radar gun and measuring the speed from the hand as the ball um, was thrown away from the radar gun. Having said this and having the experience of, of testing this method and this theory out, I'm all, I was almost um, beside myself and flabbergasted where new scouts that are on the rise for professional baseball teams have not made this observation yet. And are the uh, major league teams are even also buying into this idea of bat speed and quantifying things and uh, measuring the ball off the batting team. Going back to the opening comment of um, not following the crowd, I, um, I knew there was something brewing when the community, our hitting community was getting attached to uh, bat speed and, and enthralled with we have to improve the hitter's bat speed. I'm not disagreeing that bat speed is, is, is a, this invalued uh, commodity or property hitting, but I've discovered through, through my testing and trials and errors is this. We can improve hitting faster if we don't focus as much attention to bat speed but put more attention to bat control. As you've been watching these hitters, 
during my discussion, if you watch very carefully, you will see hitters who are demonstrating, of course, bat speed. But if you watch closely, there's great organization with the body, the, namely the torso, the hips, the shoulders, and how the levers of the arms, the shoulder, the elbows, and the wrist, they're all merging together. They're working together to create bat speed. It's, it's a lot similar to the, the golf swing in that there's great organization as when the moving parts are moving precisely together. And as I've practiced this and coached this, namely through the greatest, um, I'm sorry, namely through the best hitting drill ever, I've noticed that when I've put the attention to bat control, players hit better. They have more success with hitting more line drives line drives becoming doubles and doubles becoming home runs. One defining player or memory I had of the situation of how viable bat control is uh, over bat speed was when I was, was working with a minor league ball player <clears throat> who had set some major college records. Well, I went in the draft and uh, had a very promising you know, professional career. One attribute of his player, who was an outstanding hitter already, when uh, we were working with him, is this: he he could l literally put the the batting tee at home plate and um, put a ball on it and hit the ball over the center field wall. But more than that, he could hit the ball over the center field eye, the batter's eye just from the batting tee alone, when the, the baseball was a, in a stationary position. That is enormous bat speed. When it came to the game, when this player had enormous bat speed off the charts, he told me repeatedly when he got into the baseball game that the ball looks like a pee to him. He could not catch up to the ball. And he had, he had bat speed off the charts. So the mission was to help him with his timing and help him with his timing of his vision, to help him pick up the ball better. So to summarize everything, I just want to encourage you as a parent, player, coach, to, to take in, into consideration what I'm bringing to, um, to light is that there's more effective training when we train back control and when a player has to make a sudden reaction he he has the wherewithal and the experience from practicing how to take this bat from his stance position down to a low position or outside position or inside position because he's practiced back control and if i may one quick note and Please put this in your pocket and just remember this. 20 plus years ago, my mentor, Frank Porco, had taught me this, and this is an extension from golf. The club head speed or the barrel speed of the bat happens the greatest at the end of the swing. And it's here at the end of the swing where the elements of gaining more bat control are held.